honored. No, now you are spat upon and misused. No longer does that old eagle stand proudly above you and cry liberty and justice for all. No, now she sits with wings closed, shoulders slouched, her beak gnarled and crooked. Old glory, truly you are old. This year is your 200th birthday, but you are no longer glorious. Ichabod has been written across you and the nation for which you stand, for your people have turned their backs on the one who made them great. I can close my eyes and picture you waving over Fort McHenry. The bombs exploding in the air reveal you as you boldly stand out against the sky. Your blood-red stripes stand and cry, this is the price of freedom. Though the Declaration of Independence was written in ink, it was sealed with the blood of those who signed it. As I behold your red stripes, I think of the courage these men had to lay down their lives for the freedom of their children to come. Yet now you do not look the same as I had pictured you. Your red stripes are now a faded pink. Your people are no longer brave. No longer will they stand and fight for that which is right. Lawbreakers are their heroes. They have glorified losing to the point that they have now lost their first war. No longer are they a powerful, respected nation. The world now stands and laughs at them. Old glory, why have your people turned from the one who made them great? Your white stripes are no longer so. Now they are a dirty gray. Your people no longer care to be pure. They no longer seek after holiness. No longer is the Lord's day honored. And morality is encouraged across the land. Your people laugh at those who practice holiness and smile upon those who live in sin. They have wallowed in Satan's pig pen, and now, old glory, they are paying the price. For you see, the nation for which you stand is dying. As I see your stars on a field of blue, I think of the stars in the heavens. I ask, can those heavenly bodies exist by themselves? No, if it were not for the omnipotent hand of God, those stars would disintegrate and fly apart, never to be seen again. Yet, old glory, your people think they can exist without Almighty God. They have kicked him out of the home, the school, and the government, and look what has happened. The force courts are filled to capacity. Policemen patrol the halls of your schools to protect, protect teachers from students. Our government is full of nothing but corruption. O oh, glory, your people have proven a nation cannot stand without God. As I look at you, all I see are the ashes of what was once a great nation. Yet through the darkness, I see a ray of hope. I hear a voice as it cries, if your people will turn back to me and seek my face, I will forgive their sin and cleanse their land. Old glory, all is not lost. There is still hope. But first, your people must return to God. Then once more, can you proudly wave above the land? Then, and only then, will that old eagle be able to stand tall and spread her wings and boldly cry, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. Now also when I'm old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not until I've showed thy strength unto this generation, and thy power to everyone that is to come. And today, we're down in the Peaceful Valley home. Out of six homes, this is the only home, really, that undergirds us. The rest of them, we have to undergird. And so here in the Peaceful Valley home, it's another work of faith. We make no charge. The people agree to give what they can, and uh, we try to see that that is sufficient. And there's some who have a hard time. And I feel that uh, this is a, not a commercial home. It's not a home for people to come to die, but come to live and come to pray. And in this prayer room right here is where I believe that much of my protection has come from. While I was in jail last week, I believe that uh, this group were as faithful as anybody could be to pray. Some of our folks are not able to kneel down. Others are. But all are able to pray. And uh, the seasoned saints of the Peaceful Valley home, located in the Rio Grande Valley where the fruit is so beautiful and where something grows all the time. I mean, in the way of vegetables and, of course, the fruit, about six or eight months out of the year, we have fresh fruit and so many wonderful things. And, of course, our standards here are like they are everywhere else. God has blessed our ministers because we've stood. And we're going to continue to stand. We want to eat right, live right, and then we want to speak the right message. And we want to take care of our older people. I don't think there's a more loving place on earth than the Peaceful Valley home. Jesus will walk with me down through the valley. Jesus will walk with me over the plain. When 
when in the shadow or when in the sunshine if he goes with me I shall not complain Jesus will walk with me he will talk with me he will walk with me in joy or in sorrow today It's a real joy when we see the runway at the City of Refuge and the folks coming down to greet us. But the Johnny Davis is the superintendent. I think that's wept more over sinners than any man I know of this generation. We have a home for alcoholics and narcotic addicts. We take in people that are defeated because of liquor and because of drugs, and we work with them to help them overcome their problems. And the way we work with them is that um, we take them in and we use the Word of God because we believe that Christ is the answer uh, to these people. Uh, the problems that they have can only be solved by the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's what we work with them. We have Bible study every morning. Uh, every day we have Bible study, and, and the people respond to the Word of God, and they, they get delivered from their problem, uh, which is sin, we believe. Well, the rules are if they come here, they stay for 90 days, we have no uh, tobacco of any form. We have no tranquilizers. They're not allowed to drink or take any dope while they're here. We have no newspaper, no television sets, and uh, we just uh, study the Word of God for 90 days. We keep them for 90 days. Well, this is a beautiful old antebellum home that's uh, been here for uh, since the days of Sherman, back in the Civil War, and uh, the lady that... Uh, was born in this home, Miss uh, Susanna Troutman was the, the lady that designed the Texas flag, and she was born in this house. Her mother and daddy moved away to Texas right after she was born, uh, but uh, it's been a, a historical uh, old house for uh, many years. Well, it's always an exciting time when Brother Wolof comes from Corpus to the City of Refuge, and we always look forward for the big plane to come sailing in, land on the runway, and we greet him. Then we always wind up at the chapel <laughs> for a service. And it's so good to have him to come our way today. And it's good to have a number of friends visiting with us today here at the City of Refuge. You're always welcome. And uh, we kind of real privilege for friends to come. We just finished a meeting in uh, Milledgeville with Brother Layfield, and we had a great time. Many souls were saved, and a number of those people are here today. And Brother Luff, it's good to have you. You come and take over. Thank you, Brother Johnny. My theme for today and this year is I'm not through at 62. <laughs> this is my birthday. 62 years ago, the Lord was gracious enough to let me discover America in a home uh, that demanded that I go to church. 
and that's where I got saved. And so I'm glad to be here at the city, and we have some special things. Brother Johnny, if we ever go a day without a miracle, we're sunk. Right. I mean, it's all over. We've got to have a miracle. I think I'll introduce some of the miracles today. Hey. I think that'd be nice. I invited a fellow by the name of Bill Henderson. I spent many a tense time uh, thinking. I'm glad the Lord never worries. But if he'd ever worried, he'd worried with me about Bill. <laughs> I tell you, I, I was so tense and so under pressure when the, um, the judge said, now you know that I'm going to send him to the pen today. Those are just the words he said. I'm going to send him to the pen today. And we're going to sentence him today. And then I, I started looking for some sort of excuse to postpone. And he said, is your lawyer here? And I said, no, sir. I'm the only lawyer there is. And of course, he wouldn't let me practice law. Uh, of course, I think I'd do a better job than some of them. Yeah. But I ain't got no license, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I said, well, Judge, let's, uh, let's postpone. I mean, just put it off. And I said, Judge, uh, I, I don't know. I heard somebody say that uh, you could get two probations and starting next year, and that's about November, I think. He said, I haven't heard anything about that. District attorney spoke up and said, we haven't heard anything about it. Well, I said, it'd be good for all of us to check on it, wouldn't it? And I'll go back and ask my lawyer, and y'all find out. And, and I said, uh, if, we, if it's going to be, because he's already had one probation. We couldn't have but one in Texas at that time. But to make a long story short, the Lord... And let us get him out. They postponed the trial till January. He got his second probation, and he's on probation to me for 12, nearly 12 years. Been preaching ever since. Hey. And I never did have to revoke his probation. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Roloff. It's a real honor to be here on your 62nd birthday. And this makes some 13 years now that I've been acquainted with the Roloff Enterprises. Brother Roloff took me out of the jail 13 years ago in February, took me under his care, took me to the lighthouse and began to teach me the Word of God. And then just a few months later, he took me off to Tennessee Temple Schools. I didn't know there were that many Christian young people in all the world, much right. less in one place. Yes. And they only had about 900 students there. Then they have around 4,000 now. I thank God for this ministry, for what it's meant to my life. Uh, Brother Roloff has stood by us through the years. Uh, been the dearest friend I've ever had on this earth. And I thank God for this ministry, how God is still using it hey. to reach the unreachable, to touch the untouchable. I thank the Lord for the privilege of having a little part in it, in bringing boys and girls to a place where I know they can receive lasting help and sound. And that's just one of the miracles. Through Brother Bill's conversion, many more have come to know Jesus Christ. Yes, the City of Refuge is a place of miracles. We live on miracles here. And that's because we depend on the Lord to give victory to those who come here for help. And the